You have kind of a red leg and a red foot, don't you? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna get down here with you. Oh my goodness, the knees. I wanna get a close up. Now here is the left front, the left anterior leg, and you can see you had something happen over there. It looks like an old scar, right? Where? Right there. Oh, I don't even know. Don't even know. And then we're swollen and we're red. Now tell me again how this all started. <coughs> Well, the hose probably just touched my leg and then right away mm -hmm. it gets red. So it's a garden hose? Mm -hmm. And how many days ago did that happen? Oh, that was about a month ago. About a month ago. And the redness just worsened though, correct? Mm -hmm. And it, you kind of woke up with it this morning yeah. and then it was a lot redder and, oh, a, yes. and swollen and right there, right? And it hurts, okay. And no shortness of breath or fevers? No. And um, let's see what else I wanted to ask you. Let me push back here. Does it hurt on the back of the no. leg at all? Okay, good. And have you taken any anti-inflammatories or anything over the counter to help? No, not over the counter, but I don't know what this is. This is supposed to be a muscle relaxer. Uh-huh, and it's not gonna help with this. It doesn't this. help me at all. It does not gonna help with this because what you have is a good old fashioned case of thrombophlebitis. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah, I think my father had it. Your, th your father had it, okay. Would you mind sharing your age? 89. You're 89 years young. Okay, well, wonderful. Well, here it is Christmas Eve, and I'm trying to help you decide what's the best thing to do for this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put you on some medicine to take away the discomfort, and we're gonna put you on some medicine to get the swelling and inflammation down, okay? Now, I'm also going to have you come back the day after Christmas, which is in two days, and we're going to recheck this and make sure it's doing a lot better. Okay. Now, if it's not doing a lot better, we're going to order an ultrasound on it then. Now, I'm not going to order an ultrasound on it today because you don't have what we call a Homan sign. You don't have any tenderness at the posterior aspect of the leg. And I'm not worried that you have a blood clot that could be serious and break loose and go to the rest of your body, right? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't have one of those, but you do have a painful condition here that we can help you with, so we're gonna do that. But I wanna check and make sure things are doing better on, let's see, Wednesday. Okay. Can you come back for me on Wednesday and mm -hmm. let me recheck? Okay. All right, and if everything's going fine, we'll just continue doing what we're doing. If not, then we'll do some imaging then. Mm -hmm. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Now, if at any point this is getting a lot worse instead of better, don't wait till Wednesday. You just go on to the emergency room and they'll do an ultrasound or a CAT scan or whatever they need to do then. Okay. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think you're going to do just fine with the medicines I'm going to give you. Good. All right. Well, you have a wonderful Merry Christmas, and I'll see you back the day after Christmas. And thank you so much for letting us record your visit. Thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. We're Ms. Blue. We're back with Ms. Blue, and she had the thrombophlebitis uh, two days ago, Christmas Eve, right? Uh-huh. And we talked about um, the issues involved and how this all got started and how it suddenly reddened. And I told you you had the thrombophlebitis and then you got some medicines and you went home. And how did it go from there? Good. Went real well, didn't it? Because mm -hmm. it looks like it's not anywhere near as hot. Does not look anywhere near as painful. Now the thrombosis portion, this little spot here, looks like it opened up and bled a little bit. Did you could have that could have happened from a scratch or a bump of any kind. Your skin is very, very thin, and um, just about any kind of trauma will cause a small skin tear. But this looks a lot better. And were you able to sleep on the medicines? Yeah. Yeah, some people have trouble sleeping on those medicines. No, I yeah. took the medicine once and it didn't pain after that. Just the pain immediately on you. Right. You must have had a good doctor. <laughs> yeah. I'm teasing with you. Well, I'm glad it helped you have a merrier Christmas. And what we're going to do is we're going to have you complete that pack of medicine that I gave you, okay? Uh -huh. You keep taking that. I think it was a pill bottle, was it not? Yeah. A pill bottle. So keep taking the medicine in the pill bottle. And when you finish that up, hopefully this is completely gone or resolved by that time. Now, Ms. Blue, there's a possibility that we may have to do another round of those medicines. Okay. That sometimes happens. Sometimes thrombophlebitis will return in a short period of time, okay? And if it does, that's okay. We just treat it again. Sometimes it takes two and sometimes even three rounds. Wow. Sometimes it just does because the inflammation is so significant. I'm fighting off a little phlebitis in my, my left arm. Uh, actually, oh, really? It's more, 
yeah, it's left over from surgery that I had four, uh, four months ago, believe it or not. Wow. And it's just been moving around in my arm, and, it's, and then I bumped it, and it came back, and, and now it's kind of slowly gotten down into the wrist on the left side. But, oh, wow. But it's getting a little bit better every day, so I don't have to be on any medicine for it. It doesn't mm -hmm. cause me a lot of problems. But the point, from, the point I'm trying to get across is sometimes these come back or they want to linger a little oh. bit, okay? But you, let me just get another little picture over here. You know, the whole time I did that video before, I kept talking about this as your left leg, and clearly it's your right leg. <laughs> but I have a little bit of malapropism. Molly Malaprop has influenced me. Have you ever heard that term before? Malapropism is where a person will take and substitute one word for another. So they say, hand me that, hand me that knife. And they really mean to say fork. But in their mind, they're thinking fork, but out of their mouth comes knife. And that's called malapropism after Molly Malaprop, huh. a literary figure, um, which I believe was uh, a couple hundred years ago when it was famous. So very interesting. I do that sometimes. So this is clearly her right leg, everyone. <laughs> Ms. Blue is doing so much better. Thanks for letting us do a follow-up video. And uh, so, Happy New Year now, right? Yeah. Okay, and we'll talk to you again soon. But I would like to ask you if I could please have a muscle relaxer. Okay, now we talked about that before. Remember, you had some of that flexoril and it wasn't that working. That didn't help at all. It doesn't help. It, are you looking for a muscle relaxer to help with another problem? Over Your back. here, okay, on my sure. side, right here. Yes, of course. I'll be happy it to give you something. It just tightens up. Absolutely. And it hurts. You're 89. You've earned a little muscle relaxer. Now, here's what you need to know about muscle relaxers and your age. It's very important because there is a relationship that we need to take into consideration. Muscle relaxers in persons of your age are likely to cause you to be a little bit obtunded, which means an extra drowsy kind of confused state when you go to bed especially. So you want to be very careful that when you take the medicine that you have a clear pathway to the bathroom. So if you have to get up and go, that, that that'll be safe. All right. Um, and the first time you take, I'll give you something different because the one you had before didn't work very no, well. Not at all. all right. Uh, then you want to try to make sure that you've got somebody that is with you when you take it the first time to make sure you don't have any problems with it. The other thing is, is your insurance company is going to tell you it's not a covered medicine. And the medicine itself only costs a few pennies. You'll have to pay cash for it. And your insurance company doesn't want you to have it because they think they will think that it's too dangerous for you to have. You're not qualified for it because they'd rather you have muscle spasms. Okay. Uh, and that's the truth. They'd rather you have muscle spasms than fall. And truth be told, I'd rather you have muscle spasms than fall, right? But mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do is let you know that we can do it, but we have to be very careful uh, and make sure that you don't fall, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So Happy New Year, and we'll take care of that too. Okay. Thank you so much. Hey, folks. It's Adam from 911, and today we're taking a look at Meta 7. I've been taking Meta 7 for about two years now, and it really, really boosts my metabolism. It gets my day going, kind of like the effects of caffeine, except without the jitters, without the heart palpitations, without all the negative side effects. Now, you're going to want to take Meta 7 for a week or two before you really notice a difference. But if you're looking to lose weight and feel better, I'm a big fan of Meta 7. Go ahead and try it today. If your diet isn't what it should be, if you're getting headaches, if you're getting tired in the day, just not having the level of energy you did when you were young, Meta7 can help boost that. Boost your metabolism. Check out Meta7.